Hello, happy Friday, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Data Raven's Data Channel on YouTube. Uh, today, we're going to tackle our first real business problem of uh, predicting customer churn. So the, the problem we have here is you want to use existing customer data to predict customer churn. And this is, uh, you know, for any service company, we all know, and, and the research shows us that uh, customer churn can be a critical metric especially in the service world. And basically what we're talking about here is a customer stops doing business with our company. And we can combine that, uh, that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna combine that with a variety of other factors and see what's basically the causes of these uh, lost customers. And one of the industries that uses this quite often is this is the telecom industry, You know, the cell phone companies, uh, the cable companies, they use this quite often. And that's the data set that we're going to use today. And I'll talk about that in a minute here. And really what we're going to do today is we're going to do the churn analysis. We're going to do this in R. Uh, it's very similar to employee turnover. It's basically customer turnover. And the idea here is that not only do we want to understand why the customers are churning, but we want to be able to build a predictive model for the future of, of when a customer could potentially churn. And we're going to do that using uh, logistic regression, decision tree, and random forest. Those are the tools that we're going to introduce today. So when you think about this, if you think back to our very first video, uh, we talked about moving up this continuum of uh, data science. And what we're really looking at here is today we're going to go through, we're going to clean up the data and make it a little bit better quality. We're going to describe the data and look at it. And then we're going to do some diagnostics on it. Uh, and then um, once we do that, we're going to build these models to ultimately be predictive. So we're really making, we're going to do some data visualization as well. So we're really making a large leap here today. Again, this is the first time that we're really moving down this continuum. A lot of what we've done to date has been set up in basic tools. And uh, going forward, we're really, you know, today we're really going to get into this predictive piece. So this is the data set, uh, the, the raw data. And what I'll tell you about this is that uh, when one of the great things about R is when you import that data set into R as a data frame, uh, you basically still have it's your, your raw data is still there. And I would definitely suggest as a best practice, and we'll probably talk about this in a future video, but how to, how to uh, think about putting pieces uh, and putting the data file in, a, in like a safe place and then making a copy of it to do your work on. But this particular data set is uh, 19 variables, including uh, the, the Y, which is the churn, and it's 7,043 rows to start out with. Again, this is the raw data, and you'll see how that changes as we go through. Uh, these are just some examples of the, uh, of the fields here. Uh, you can see here the churn is our what we would call our Y, and these are all our Xs. Uh, things like it's, this customer file has a customer ID in it, the gender of the customer, are they a senior citizen, um, you know, do they have device protection, are they using paperless billing, that type of stuff, their tenure. So we're going to see how we manipulate these factors as we go through. And uh, so let's get to it. So if we remember from our R, um, our R session, we again have four windows. Uh, we have our code, our script over here. And what you're gonna see, the great thing about this is you can do this total, um, and we're not gonna do all 200 of these lines, but it's just over 200 lines of code, 201 lines of code, if you will. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, remember we have our code over here. We have our environment over here that we're gonna see the data become loaded into. Uh, we have our console down here that we'll see the commands being executed. And primarily today, we'll see our plots come up over here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and read in. Uh, we're going to pull in these libraries and um, go ahead and do that. And then uh, you notice I didn't get any messages because this is probably the fourth time today I've run this just to, just to check it out. Uh, the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to bring in the, the file. So we're going to use this command read CSV and that's what I've called it. I've put it in my working directory and when I run this code it's going to show up here again if you remember from the PowerPoint 7043 um, um, uh, observations rows if you will 21 variables and if you want to browse that you can just click on it and it'll load up over here. We have our customer ID and these are the things that we looked at. Again, you can look at it at any time just to get some idea of what you're looking at and become familiar with what, you know, what's in there. Um, so, so we'll go ahead and close this. 
Uh, and then the other thing that you can do is if you want to understand, uh, you could you notice there were a lot of words or uh, text in the file right now. So when we start doing logistic regression, it's going to be looking for things like zeros and ones or categories. Uh, so, but if I run this, what this will tell me is that uh, what type of field is it? So if it's the customer ID is character, uh, this is telling me that right now my only integer uh, files are the senior citizen, um, the tenure. Um, so these are the numbers. Uh, and then monthly charges and total charges. They're the only numbers in the data set right now. So the first thing I wanna do now, we're gonna talk about data quality is how many values do I have missing? So this isn't a command up here that I can use uh, as supply. And what I can do is it's saying uh, how many are NA. And when I do that, it shows me all my fields and it shows me that zero is good in this case, there are no missing values. But in this case, I have total charges and there's 11 missing values. So this is where you have to ask yourself, hey, I got, I got 7,043 rows. Do I need all 7,043 of them? Um, you know, and, and the larger the data set, the answer to that question is normally no. So what I'll do here is I'm gonna redefine the data frame and I'm gonna say only give me complete cases. So if there's a blank or an NA, and what you're gonna see here is when I run this, this 7,043 is gonna go down by 11. So when I run that, notice how now it changed to 7,032. Uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna recode some of these columns. So I'm gonna turn them into, um, if it's no, I'm gonna turn it into um, no, or if it's like it says no internet service, I just wanna turn, turn it into no, and make it very simple. So that's what this piece is gonna do here. I'm gonna do that. Um, and hold on, let me, let me do, there we go. Um, do that. And then um, the second thing here is uh, I want to turn that into a factor. So here I say as factor. And when I do that again, when I run it, it's changing the type of, of uh, value that the, or type of number that that is. The next thing I want to do is I want to look at this tenure thing. And I want to, it tells me that what is it? It says, what is the minimum of the churn, which is the name of the data file and the tenure? and what's the maximum. And it tells me that my minimum is one, my maximum is 72. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create, right now see how I have 21 variables. I'm gonna create a new variable and I'm gonna call that, uh, I'm gonna call that tenure group. And when I do that, you see this goes up to 22 up here. And now if I browse the data, what I'll see is it, it tacks it onto the end. I now have a tenure group. So instead of having a number in between here, I've basically kind of histogrammed it and made it into a group. The next thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna turn my senior citizen into a factor. So I'm gonna make it, uh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna make this the other way. I'm gonna make it a factor, but I'm gonna make it from zero to one to no and yes. So again, if I look at it here, my senior citizens are zero one. After I run this command, it's gonna tell me now that my senior citizens are no and yes. So then the other thing now is in terms of now that I've grouped the tenure and the, we know that the customer ID really, in this case, we know probably means absolutely nothing. So when I run this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this and I'm gonna, I'm gonna get rid of those two columns. And again, you'll see this change from 22 to 20. So there it is, it's now 20. Um, and those columns are now gone. And then the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna say, okay, um, I'm gonna change the churn to a factor. Now, again, if I browse this and I look at it, my churn is towards the end here. That's what I'm trying to predict and trying to analyze. Right now it's a no and a yes. If I'm gonna do logistic regression, it really needs to be a zero and a one. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna make that change. So now I'm all set to go. I'm, I'm, I'm set to, to uh, the one thing I do want to do is I want to look at those numeric variables. And they were, if you remember now at this point, the way we have it set up, the only ones that are there are the, uh, the, the monthly charges and the total charges. So what, I, what this is going to tell me here is I'm going to go ahead and run this. I'm going to run a correlation matrix. And what I'm going to see here is they're pretty correlated. Uh, total charges to monthly charges, 0.65. 
And the reason why I'm doing that is because I really don't need to have both of them in the data set to use as a predictor. I'm trying to eliminate variables to start out. So we're going to go ahead and take the total charges out. And again, you'll see that 20 will change to 19. And now I'm all set to go. So now I'm, I'm starting, I'm starting to I'm, I've explore, I've cleaned up the data set, I've gotten it ready for the analysis. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the, what's now called the exploratory data analysis or EDA. So I'm going to create a bunch of bar plots. That's what this is doing. ggplot is a bar plot thing here. You can see it actually says geometric bar. And I'm going to print all these uh, tiles of bar plots. And I'm just going to run this uh, just real quick so, so we can go through this relatively quickly. And what it's doing is it's going to create four bar plots um, on each tile here or each page. And this is, again, so you can become familiar with the data. You know, as you look at it, you want to see, okay, what is really going on here? So in my first set here, I have my gender, you know, male and female, 50-50. Uh, senior citizens more are, are more are not senior citizens. Uh, partners, uh, dependents, a little heavy on the no. Um, you know, here's the phone service. A lot of people have the phone service. It says, you know, close to 90% here. Uh, multiple lines, well to, relatively well balanced. Uh, fiber optic seems to be the leading uh, internet service. Um, again, this is just to you become familiar with the data set and get a look pictorially, what does it look like? Uh, if these were all imbalanced or way off, you know, where you had zero or five and 95, you might really have to do some additional, additional studies. So we'll continue to page through again. These all look to be relatively well balanced. So what that tells us is we're going to go ahead and we're going to use um, we're going to use all these factors, the remaining factors. So remember, we now have 19 variables. Uh, one of them is the is the is the y. So basically, we have 18 x's. And what we're going to do here is uh, this is a typical technique where you're going to split the data set into training and testing. So you're going to use the training set to train the model. And then you're going to use the remaining data that hasn't been used in calculating, doing the calculations to test to see whether or not the model, how accurate the model is. So we're going to do that here. And what we're going to see is two more data frames are going to come up here. And here we have it. So we have 2108 rows now are in the, are in the, the testing and 4924 are in the training. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to start out with our logistic regression. And what this is saying here is this is the command GLM for uh, logistic regression. Uh, and and the, the log model is just we're going to give it a simple name. And what this is we're saying is that the churn, which is that, again, we're looking at the training. It's this variable right here. The churn is a function and this little tilde means, and then just, a, just the, the period means it's a function of all the remaining columns in the data set. Now you could actually, if you were gonna use, this is a shorthand way to say you're gonna use them all. If you were only gonna use some of them, which we'll see below, you actually type them out. Uh, it's binomial and we're gonna, the data we're gonna use again is the training set. And then we're gonna run a summary afterwards. So when I run this, uh, I'm going to scroll up here so you can see this. So what this is telling me is a couple different things. Um, it's telling me, first of all, what are the most important factors? And it actually tells you down here the significance, um, the, the, the more stars or asterisks, the more significant it is. And if I look at it, what it's really telling me is that for the most part, my contract, my paperless billing, and my tenure group, especially these two, are very important to predicting that churn. So what I'm going to do here is now I want to understand, okay, if now that I've, I've trained my model, I want to test it and see use the, using the testing data. So you can see here, I now want to use the testing data to see how accurate it is. And I'm going to run this. And it comes up and it tells me that my accuracy is about 78.7%, 79%. And, you know, you could say, well, is that good? Um, and, and, we're, and what we're going to do here is we're going to run some other algorithms. Instead of, you could go back and, for example, just pull out 
all the critical ones with the high number of stars and rerun it and see if the 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 the, uh, the, the accuracy goes up. Um, but we're we'll 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 come back to that. So here we're going to go ahead and use what's called a confusion matrix. And when we do that, what this is saying is that the the this is showing, and this is a typical tool that we use in data science to say, okay, zero is false. So what this is saying is zero, I had 1,389 that I, I, I predicted, uh, and I had, I, for to predict false, I had 1,389 that came out as false, but I did have 159 that came out as true. And then here, this is true, this was a little bit more balanced on the true. So it, the model seems to be able to pick the falses a little bit more accurately. Uh, again, we'll come back, we'll continue to look at these different models. And this is typically what you'll do is you'll say, okay, well, I use the logistic regression. I got about 78%, um, is that good? And then you, you'll continue to, you may try, well, let me try a different algorithm or you may continue to tune this particular model. Um, another tool that you can use here is again, to validate to start thinking about the um, the the, um, the 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 features, the different which of the columns are important is what's called the odds ratio. And when you run this, you'll get it. And this is it takes a little bit longer. You'll see a little stop sign comes up here. Um, you know, five five or ten seconds it'll take. And then this is telling you really what are the odds that this will actually occur. And if you look at this again, you got some pretty high ones here. Again, five five point eight percent are the odds for the zero to twelve, two point two for the twelve to twenty four. Uh, my streaming movies is pretty high. My internet service fiber optic very high. Uh, again, it's just another way to look and try and understand what it's another tool, what variables you could use in your model. Uh, the next algorithm we're going to use is called a decision tree. And we're going to, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to purposely create an error and show you a best practice that you can use as you continue to do this work and you continue to work in, in, in R or in Python. So when I run this, I'm going to get an error and really the, it's the first error that matters because what it's saying here is I couldn't create the tree. So of course I couldn't plot it. And what this is really saying to me is that if I look at this, it's telling me that my, I had an error because the character class is not supported. And that was because I had in that, uh, that the, these particular ones that I want to be able to look at. And when I did up here, you'll notice now in the tree, I've said, okay, let me just look at these three variables, the contract, the tenure group, and the paperless billing. Those are still text values. So even though if I go and look in the testing or the training set, those ones, for example, the, um, the paperless billing is still a yes. So what I'm going to do here is, and that's okay that it says yes, but it's, it's, it's a character. It's not, it's not, it's a, it, it's a word. The system is seeing it as a word. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to now, and what I've done here is, as an example, I already knew this, but, but early on when I was just learning these different tools, I would take, I would copy this error. I go out to Google and I Google it. And normally it takes you to a Stack Overflow page or somewhere else, and that's where the answer is. And they'll tell you, okay, it's because you haven't converted. And it may even give you the solution, which this particular page does. And that's what I always do. I always put in here, you know, the, what was the error? I comment it out. Remember the hashtag is a comment. And I put the web page there to help me remember. So I'm gonna go ahead and convert these now. And then when I do, um, this will work. So when I do this, I get a decision tree here. And what this is telling me is, I'm gonna blow this plot up so that you can see it. Um, this starts to explain, again, I use those three factors. And what this starts telling me is that, um, as I look at this, the, it's telling me that the contract seems to be the most important variable. And it's kind of common sense that you would figure this out. The high bars here are the high churn. And what this is telling me is that, you know, if, if they're in a one year or two year contract, they're definitely less likely to churn. So it's kind of common sense that if people are going month to month, they're probably the people who are going to churn. As I look at this, uh, it's the people who about, about, about the 12 month point, they start to uh, churn. 
And again, the paperless versus the non-paperless is somewhat balanced. But what this is really telling you is that it kind of starts to focus you in on, okay, when are those customers going to churn? Um, and then what I can do here is, again, this is all using the training data. And notice when I zoomed, it did create a zoomed out, a zoomed version here for me. But when I close it, it's still down here. It's still resident in the plots. So now I'm going to, I want to be able to go ahead and, and see what the, uh, do a confusion matrix for my decision tree, same tool. And then um, when I do that, I'm going to now, again, I'm going to go ahead and predict the, um, I'm going to go ahead and predict based on, again, the, the model that I created. I'm going to go ahead and, and I'm going to go ahead and create that. Uh, and I'm going to test the, using the testing set. So now I'm also, uh, let's go ahead and go a little bit deeper in the accuracy. And when I run that, what I can see here is there's my, there's my confusion matrix up there. Again, I had uh, 1396 that were predicted as false, I, but I had 348 that were predicted as true. So it's still not, you know, again, and then here for true, I had 152 that were actual and 212 that were, that were, uh, that were predicted as, as false. So again, um, I'm sorry, so this, this would be false true. Uh, so again here, what this is telling me is that my uh, decision tree is a little bit less accurate. Remember, my logistic regression was 78%. My logistic, uh, or my uh, decision tree is about 76%. So now we'll go ahead and do look at the last one here, the uh, random forest. So again, this is another whole different algorithm here. Uh, you can see the command there, random forest. Again, I'm looking at all the variables with the tilde and I'm looking. And right away it pumps out, it gives me a, con a confusion matrix. So it's going ahead, it's laid that out. It's told me uh, also what my error rate is. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna, um, I'm going to go ahead and again, I'm going to run my prediction now using my first, my first uh, tree that are my, or my first random forest that I ran. And what this is going to tell me is that I'm about 77.8% accurate. So still not as accurate as logistic regression, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, I'm going to tune. This is a little bit easier to tune the random forest model. So I'm going to go ahead and plot this, do this graph. And what this is really telling me is, is that, based on the number of trees. So this is kind of like a Monte Carlo simulation. It does. That's why it took a little bit longer because it's running a bunch of different simulations. What this is really telling me is if this is my error rate, that really drops off. We know for sure that it drops off around 200. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. I'm going to tune the model and I'm going to use 200 that you can see here, my tries, my number of tries, and I'm going to run that. Again, this will take a little bit longer. You can see it's searching left and right. And now it's told me, okay, based on how you ran that previous uh, number, that previous model, uh, after the tuning, I'm going to run it again. I'm going to call this one RF model new, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to print this out. And what this is telling me is that I'm going to use that 200 here, but this graph tells me that um, my number of tries that I want to try, my lowest error is around two. So what this is telling me is if I try, if I run it, if I replicate it multiple times, it doesn't get better. It actually gets worse. So when I run this, it'll go ahead and run again, you know, uh, 10 or 15 seconds. It's a little bit more complicated of a model. And I'll do the same thing. I'll rerun it. And now what you'll notice is my accuracy is probably the highest one we've seen at uh, 78.5%, which wasn't really much better than this one up here, uh, a little bit better. But what you'll notice is my sensitivity has also gone up. So the model is being a little bit more sensitive here. It's gone up to almost uh, 90, 90% or over 90%. So again, this is, you can continue to try and tune this uh, using different factors. Uh, and you, but the most important lesson here to learn is you want to try different models, but you also want to tune them and you want to pick the one that is your best. Because now what you can do is you can go back to these different things and say, okay, like for example, we can run 
uh, an importance plot here of the features. And what this is going to tell us is that, again, what are the most important features? And when I look at this, again, the contract type, uh, the tenure group that they're in, and their monthly charges. And again, some of this is common sense. Well, of course, you know, if they're depending on how they're going to contract or how long they've been with the company, certainly people who've been with the company longer are less likely to leave, but who knows what the data set's going to say. Uh, it also gives you the opportunity to look at, for, for example, um, the, the internet uh, service here on, on both of these scores uh, shows you that um, it's kind of somewhere in the middle. So that might be a tilting point, right? That if, hey, if I can convince somebody to get internet service, but now this begins to become predictive. And what you would do here is, you know, you would have to decide, okay, if I'm gonna use this model now and say, okay, my, I'm gonna use this model going forward and I'm gonna look at these factors. Um, as you change a factor, you have to decide when are you gonna rerun this analysis and when do you see a change in that data? But again, um, hopefully this was educational. Uh, again, these files will be posted in the, um, the GitHub for the YouTube channel. The link will be in the, at the YouTube page. And please feel free to pull down these files and use them in your own work. Again, you can uh, use these files. Um, if, you know, again, if, as long as you have it set up in rows and columns, you can use it on any type of file. And that's really how you learn. That's the best way to learn. Uh, you know, if you don't have as many columns, you don't obviously have to have as many charts that we printed out here. Uh, but again, if you like our um, if you like our videos and our channel, please uh, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe to our channel. Uh, and everybody have a wonderful weekend.